I think it's time for a cheeky fish room update. I haven't done one in quite a while and actually a lot has changed in my fish room. You might notice I've got a lot of growth now in my macroalgae tanks, particularly this tank. It has been an absolute success story. Now that the hair algae has vanished from my system or in the main part vanished, you can see the mackerel is absolutely thriving. There's so many different species in here. I'm not gonna go through them all, but you can be the eyed amongst you. You can have a little look, see what is going on. Still suffering a little bit from dust settling on the mackerel, even with the extra flow and some upgraded filtration, but it's okay, everything is growing and happy. Down below, we have some Cheetomorpha spinning around in the current, and we have my Oliver tank. This stuff is brilliant. You can see I'm using these 150 watt UFO style grow lights on this. Moving down the system, you can see the little nano tank that I set up a couple of weeks ago. It is doing fantastically. I'm actually really impressed. In that video, I did tell you that these bits of rock were all really mature. I didn't really expect there to be much of a cycle in this tank. And there hasn't been really. There's a little bit of um, brown algae growing but nothing to the extent in which you would expect a brand new aquarium when you first set it up. It's actually been quite a nice setup tank this, it hasn't had any issues so far. You can see that the colium I put in there is growing, this little sprout that was on the rock has been joined by many many other little sprouts. So I'm quite hopeful this tank's just going to get better and better because all the little nuggets of algae that I put in there are all starting to grow and sprout. One thing I have noticed is this light is potentially too bright or too close because any algae that's in the middle here tends to go a little bit pale. You can see it on the octodes, it gets paler as it goes towards the light. So it might be a little bit too bright, but we'll follow its growth in further videos. One thing I've done a lot of work to and I'm now really happy with is this tub system. This is still connected to this big sump here, but I've changed the lighting over. So initially this was running to 54 watt T5 tubes, so two on the bottom and two on the top, but the light wasn't really bright enough and nothing was really growing other than hair algae, so I've changed that. What I did is I moved the two 55 watt bulbs from the top down and then I also upgraded two of the T5 tubes to these Arcadia T5 LED replacements and these are 18,000 Kelvin ones for marine spectra so I've got two of those you can see better in this profile here how I've set it up and wow the difference is made in lighting oh, you can see it in the reflection in fact is immense there's so much more light down here now and the macro algae has really started to grow although I'm starting to get hair algae again because obviously I've increased the light I think at some point the balance will go towards the mackerel as it has done in other tanks in this system. And up above, I've done a little DIY job for the mounting. Now you might think this looks a little bit crazy, but what I've used here is greenhouse sheeting. This is the stuff you use for roofing. It allows light through and so on. I had a bit spare over, so I just siliconed it onto the side of my tubs and now I'm using it as a mountain bracket. It actually looks quite ace I think. Nice and clear, doesn't really get in the way or look bad I don't think and it does the job nicely. And at the top here I've replaced the T5s with a tri-spec 2 and I've got a spare um, fluval reef 2.0 up here as well. So essentially increase the lighting a lot and you can see how much the mackerel is loving it. So we've got Cryptonemia crenulata in here and we've got a new one which previously I couldn't get to grow but this is a very hardy specimen, Calerpa taxifolia. I bought a little nugget off eBay and it's growing really really well especially under these lights and then we've got Calerpa brachypus, a new species for me that's starting to grow really nicely and in here we've got more Codium and we've got some red ogo. So it's all looking good on this side. So here is the other side of my shed. And you might notice already that I've broken down the Fluval Marine 123. Why did I do that? Because it wasn't adding any value to my fish house. I wasn't paying it the attention it deserved. It was just getting covered in hair algae. It wasn't working. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna set up the Superfish Scaper here. I did do a video about setting up a clownfish tank and I was gonna set a tank up on a video and do that. And that's still the plan and it's happening here. Now I've broken that tank down. The Fluval Shaker 252. It's been 
um, an issue the whole time really, hasn't it? Because I've always had hair algae in it. I've put it down to excess nutrients coming out of this lava rock and it still seems to be that way. However, I've put some lava rock from that same tank into this little tank and we've not got any hair algae. So it's leading me to believe that this is not the lava rock's fault. It could in fact be an environmental issue with this entire system. So what I've done here is I've done plenty of more water changes than I normally would and I've increased the flow. I'll get onto that in a second. I've also increased the filtration. So hopefully we will get rid of this hair algae. I mean, it is starting to recede. It's starting to go a little bit paler. So you can see here where it's going a bit whiter. Um, and that normally means you're starting to beat it. But hair algae isn't one of these things that goes overnight. Obviously I've added macro algae. I've got Calerpa racemosa. I've got Calerpa prolifera. Um, and some other bits and pieces in here. So I think the long game on this tank will just be to reduce nutrients um, and increase filtration. And hopefully, maybe in another six months, this will be um, hair algae free and we'll be fine. If we go on to the other tanks on this system, because they're all connected, I've got a similar issue at the top here. And I think what's happening here, because the water is coming from this sump, dirt is getting pumped up there it doesn't have any filtration and then it's just ending up in this tank and possibly this tank although there is a filter down here which should be taking that out and then that's promoting detritus build up and then hair algae so to combat that what i have done is recently and by recently i mean yesterday i have fitted a large pond filter this is a really cheap fish mate 15,000. um Apparently you can filter 3,000 gallons, so definitely big enough for this system. And that's connected up to this um, Amphibious IQ by Blagden. That is 60 watt one, which I think is like 6,000 litres an hour or something. And that is basically filtering this sump and thereby filtering the whole system. So more than enough filtration, it's also providing flow into the sump as well to stop debris and stuff settling in this sump, and then it can get sucked up by the filter. Now, as I said, I only put that in there yesterday, so we're just gonna see how that goes, how that works, but I'm fairly confident with the extra filtration and the extra flow, we can get on top of this side and this hair algae. You can see the macro algae is happy, it's growing, so, you know, lighting-wise and nutrient-level-wise we're okay, but I think it's just all the lack of filtration I had on this side which was causing my issues. I've also upgraded this side to the same T5 replacement lights as I've used on my tub system. The reason being, it's 18 watts a tube rather than 54 watts a tube. Now they do cost about 40 quid each, but I've worked out over the year, they're gonna pay for themselves. So going on 12 months, they'll actually be saving me um, about 20 pounds per tube per month, which is enormous saving in electricity. I've got my extra lights here. This is gonna be coming up this weekend and the following week more reviews to be done. They've literally been sitting in this box for a couple of weeks now, so I need to get on that. And then over in this corner, my trusty freshwater planted system is doing amazingly well. Um, not much to really say about this, it's just ticking along. This is what pays my electricity bills, basically. Selling these floating plants pays for my electric, which is a really nice way of being self-sustaining in this hobby. Another thing I've done on this system is actually buy some mangroves. I've got two sitting there. They're just poking their little heads above the water there. That's kind of all they need for the moment. Um, I will eventually put them in a proper position, but this is just to cultivate them, get the roots grow a little bit. And I've got some more in this system here. I've got another three here. When they're in this kind of state, they don't need a great deal of light. You can see they've got some leaves coming out. Um, they're quite happy just sitting there. They've actually grown an extra leaf since they've been there. I only got them four or five days ago. So, still early days. But what I hope to do is grow a couple of mangroves out of this sump, you know, up and around this area, obviously leaving access and stuff. But it looked cool having mangroves out of there. And then we're gonna have some more coming out of here as well. And hopefully I'll get some lighting system along this bar. And then that can do a down spotlight onto the mangroves. And it'll look really cool having this below and then a mangrove tree or two above it. I got them from, believe it or not, mangroves and more. So. That's where they've come from. However, I am considering 
importing a few hundred mangroves myself because I know where I can get them from and putting them onto my website. So if anyone's interested in that, that is something I may have available by maybe the end of next month. So thanks for watching. I know some of you really like this kind of video where you see what I'm working on how my shed is going. Um, generally, it's going really well. So thank you for watching. Also, thank you for making it to the end of the video if you have. Once again, thanks for watching and happy fish keeping.